Hello, and welcome to my flawless solo legendary lost sector guide for Scavenger's Den, which I did on all three characters for all three exotics several times, and managed to find the Telesto Catalyst actually, which is one of the two exotic catalysts that drops from the legendary lost sectors. The Telesto increases magazine size and ammo reserves, the fourth horseman increases magazine and reload speed. They are definitely worth getting hold of. So it's the uh, it's the same loadout, same loadout for all three characters. Um, it's just going for the uh, overload sub, reach and clear, rocket launcher with Argent ordnance boosting it. Basically, gonna do the exact same thing we did in the other lost sectors. But uh, the main difference with this one being that well, bunker and perdition were easy. And uh, quarry, quarry's a pain in the ass in boss room. This one is, is it's got the worst, worst exotic drop rate I've had on any legendary lost sector. I don't know if that's just me or if I've just been getting lucky, but it's awful. Anyway, uh, talk about this for a second. So with this uh, first room. The uh, look, you basically just want to take out the ants from the sides. That marauder up there on the back, he will continue sniping you. You want to get rid of him eventually. Basically, just try and kill quite a few of the ants just to stop the incoming damage while you're dealing with the champions. But the important thing is not to take out all of the ants in this room because if you have. I think when you get down to one or two enemies left in the room, it spawns the second wave of enemies, which includes the second champion for this room. And it's much easier to deal with one champion at a time. So, tactic-wise, uh, breach and clearing the champions, destroying them, obviously, this, uh... Without the Enter Barrier mod, it can be a work in progress, and you will see the Enter Barrier mods are, would be a little bit more helpful in this little sector than they've been in previous ones. Or uh, alternate loadouts, which I'll mention as we go through. But you can still get away with just using one champion mod and breach and clear combined. See the second wave of ad spawns at the top just up there with an overload captain. Um, take out a few of those out. You can take out as many as as you want, to be honest, because nothing else spawns here. And on to the second room, which you can either go this direction, or you can go this direction. Uh, now the first direction on the left, that brings you out in a in a low ground, so obviously if you prefer high ground, take the right hand side. Generally take the right hand side, just because it's easier. <coughs> As you can see on Titan, I decided to go a little bit of a warmine build. It, it was very helpful, to be fair. Now it's it's tempting to rush ahead, but you you treat these mines with respect and from a distance. Because if you don't they kill you from further away. You treat them with respect from a distance. 
That happens to me three times. Now with the uh, final boss room, it's separated into two layers, really the layer at the front of you, which will have two champions which come down to you, one barrier, one overload, and the layer at the back in the far right, which you can see people launching stuff at us continuously. The people up on that ledge have very good aim, and uh, the Lost Sector boss has got a big old arc shield. If you if you want to go for a different loadout or an arc rocket launcher, that would probably make him less of a nuisance. But uh, this this is the only area where I felt the real disadvantage of not carrying multiple champion mods, because you need to time it perfectly to get rid of them, rid of them really. That, or you can run out of ammo and go absolutely ham with your super running around to express your frustration. It does some damage at least. I'm not gonna lie, the uh, the Titan run on this is not it's not my most impressive. The, uh, the Warlock is a lot more fluid, the Hunter can be more survivable, uh, the Titan, downside of the Titan is you generally need to be pretty close to get the value out of the subclass. But, I mean, there, for alternate loadouts, that still include Breach and Clear, uh, you could go for double hand cannon. So you can use a hand cannon overload champion mod. Uh, go for a normal kinetic hand cannon with your overload uh, mod applied and Ariana's Vow for your energy weapon. Now, Ariana's Vow, uh, that goes straight through shields, but you cannot stack multiple champion mods, hence the second hand cannon. For that option, you would want to use a, a grenade launcher for your heavy weapon. Take out the Argent Ordnance mods completely, replace them with something that works with your natural loadout. Maybe it's um, a Warmind build or something like that. But a heavy grenade launcher will activate the Breach and Clear just as well as anything else. And if you've ever used Ariana's Bow, it's pretty fantastic. I mean, obviously, if you have Anarchy, then. Let's, let's be honest, if you have anarchy then you shouldn't really be watching a guide on how to do a legendary loss sector. But yeah. What I'm saying is heavy grenade launchers, they work too. Failing that, if you're having as much trouble as I clearly was on the Titan, you could always go Thunder Crash Titan with the Caress of a Falling Star, I think it is. The the new, the exotic chest piece that turns your Thunder Crash into a nuclear warhead, basically. Uh, if you breach and clear a champion realistically, you should be able to thunder crash one shot the barrier champion, and that was the only champion that was really giving me much problem there. Because again, I didn't use the mods, that's really my own fault. So. In the end, uh, uh, what I was saying earlier about this Lost Sector having the worst exotic drop rate. Um, out of the, I mean, I'm kind of used to walking into a legendary Lost Sector, doing it one or two times, pretty much getting a flawless run straight away and getting the exotic drop straight away. And I, I feel as if I've been very lucky in that regard so far. So, I mean, in this Lost Sector, Warlock, five runs for the exotic. Titan. 12. 12 runs for the Titan, which was why I was getting a little bit frustrated with the box. The Hunter took 29 runs on the Scavenger Den Lost Sector. 29. Which is what we're gonna do now. 29. 
Now with the Hunter, uh, I found a great deal of success across the 29 runs with both Stasis and Void Hunter. Uh, the Void Hunter, because frankly you can go invisible, it confuses enemies, you can slow enemies down. It helps. It's, I mean, with champions, any mods that impact a champion, well, impact a player on Crucible will impact a champion. Which is why, if you're having trouble on the Titan, try switching to Void and use a Suppressor Grenade, because it stops the champion's abilities, like regeneration. Uh, but yeah, with the Hanzo, a lot of the same. Just stay active, stay mobile, because uh, obviously a lot of the armor, I mean, you can change your mods and be as resilient as a Titan, but just stay aware of your surroundings. Shield mini bosses were kind of a pain in the ass. I think it's just the servitor shield mini bosses have a slightly bigger hip, like health span than the other shields. Not sure. Anyway, they are kind of a pain in the ass. But as I mentioned during the Titan, uh, just in case you skip straight ahead to the Hunter part of the video, there are alternative loadouts that you can be using for this. Uh, that still use Breach and Clear, like a heavy grenade launcher to activate Breach and Clear, and then you can use whatever guns you want with champion mods on it just to speed things up. Uh, realistically, if I hadn't been so stubbornly using the Wither Horde, I probably could have got this Lost Sector done in under 5 minutes on any given run. That being said, the uh, Overload champions aren't that difficult to get hold of. This actually, this guy became my favorite champion because you don't actually need to use any heavy ammo to kill him. You can stand on this step and he never hits you because he's always shooting the step in front of you because he misses. So you save heavy ammo and he can't hurt you. He's, he's the only champion in this lost sector that I like. Make sure you do that one from a distance. The explosion travels up the cave, it will kill you. As I mentioned in the Titan, you respect those mines.
and then on basically all versions of this I use this entry point as a good safe area to shoot from and it is no one will ever come over here the downside is you eventually run out of ammo and have to run around doing desperate runs over areas that you're pretty sure you kill things in please remember you can just go back to the previous room and pick up some ammo like I finally remembered after doing a kamikaze run to try and get some submachine gun ammo Twenty-nine bastard times that took. Twenty-nine. Alright, so, with the Warlock, which only took five runs. Five. This was one of the fi five runs! Twenty-nine versus this ridiculous RNG can suck it. Anyway. So with the Warlock, I went for a bottom tree storm collar because I enjoy having the Arc Soul on my rift. That's mostly it, to be honest. Like, I probably could have gone for mid tree and uh, used the super on the champions a little bit more straightforward. It would have been very sensible. Uh, just reference for this first room. This is the only time I actually explain this. Uh, the first room, if the uh, barrier champion comes up towards you a little bit too much. Go across to another part of the room, kill something quickly, and the barrier champion will chase you, leaving the ads all unprotected on this slope. Once again, do not kill every ad in this room. You want to keep at least three or four alive along with the boss until you've finished with the barrier champion. 
because if you don't have, if you get down to like three or four people in this room, it spawns the second wave of enemies, which includes the Overlord Champion, which you can do without. So with the Warlock, uh, grenade wise I've gone for that little Stormcloud one. If you do Breach and Clear, Stormcloud Grenade and a Rocket Launcher with Argent Ordnance. The combination pretty much finishes off the Barrier Champion, any of them really if you've got them stunned. Uh, the Barrier Champion is the quickest way of getting rid of the Barrier Champion, which is why this would be the quickest run that I've done. Which may be why I only needed to do it five times on the Warlock. Damn. Thank you. 